Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining uh, the 21st community call. Uh, today we have uh, 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 Ali to speak about uh, the new novelties in the Argos. Um, and uh, we are happy to having you here and to hear uh, more from uh, you and your feedback. So, Ali, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, okay. Hi. Okay. I, I was. I, I thought that we will uh, wait a few minutes because more people are uh, registered. But uh, we can we can quickly start. Uh, let me <coughs> let me just put the no disturb here, just so that I don't receive notifications. Okay. Good. Uh, exciting uh, times today because we are finally able to share with you uh, what you will be very soon be able to use in Ar on Argos. Uh, we have been, you know, looking at our uh, help desk. <laughs> you have been helping us a lot with uh, letting us know what works, what doesn't. And this, um, this helped us uh, to prioritize some of the new features and some things that could better uh, your, you know, your experience in Argos. Uh, and today we're going to show you a couple of things. So first we're going, well, not first, but among them is how you can review plants. Uh, we have established a mechanism that you can use to review plants. Uh, how you can get in-app notifications, because uh, we know that we have been spamming you. <laughs> this, this was, <laughs> and sorry about this, but this was to make sure that you received, uh, you know, every update. But now uh, this is not the case because you can select where you want to get the updates of um, uh, the DMPs and, and the software management plans or whatever plan you're doing, either in the app uh, or on your email. Then we have configured uh, a new, uh, we have refactored uh, the login system so that it's compatible with the EOS AAI. So it's uh, with, uh, following the protocol, the Kiklo protocol. And this is, you know, it, it doesn't change much how you log in, but uh, it's uh, a whole new structure, let's say, uh, underneath it and supporting your login uh, options. We have enhanced uh, the prefilling functionality because this was very popular, uh, how to prefill and automate some of the writing, let's say. And we were asked to, well, the, the requirement, let's say, was can we use the prefilling in different parts of the DMP? You couldn't before, but now you can. So we will show you this as well. Uh, and also, um, another thing was uh, that you wanted to use Argos. You wanted to use Argos uh, on the cloud, so you have your own uh, space in Argos uh, when logging in with your own credentials uh, in your institution. So this is possible for administrators to now uh, get uh, a tenant in Argos and configure it to you know, connect to their own, uh, to, to your own services and to different um, structures inside the organization or at national level. Uh, and um, all this to be accessible via argos.open.eu slash your tenant. Right, uh, with that being said, I will share my screen. Uh, hopefully, I can find the correct screen. Uh, maybe that one. It's this one. Can you see or did you do anything? No. Uh, no, we can't see anything. Now? Can you see the login? Yes. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> so you see that uh, this, the login even has changed. Uh, it's not anymore. Maybe I can actually 
give, give it in comparison. Okay, maybe I can uh, add a new tab. Okay, check how login is has been so far. So this was the 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 login before we configured each individual provider uh, and protocol here, but now we have switched to this page where you can log in either via Google or via Opener. This is not yeah, this is not uh, in our beta uh, configured, but it will be on production, uh, similar to how you do it on Argus Opener. You follow Opener and then go. Um, to um, educate and find your institution uh, and get uh, access with your institutional credentials there. So I'm going to quickly log in by my Google account. Okay. Right, and now not much has changed here, but you will see uh, up here, hopefully, maybe I can zoom in. Yes, so here uh, on the top bar, you find more information, you find more icons uh, which correspond to new things that you can do. Uh, you find, for example, this, which is about the tenant, um, that you are working on. For example, if I, the purple one, let's say it's my institution. If I want to work on the institution, I switch to my tenant there, that I am uh, a user. And I can see uh, the new, this tenant. So you can see that the brand, you know, the, the fonts, uh, the, the colors are different, corresponding to, let's say, the purple branding of this uh, fictional institution um, called purple. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, I have the same, um, the same functionalities to create my plan, to see my plans, to create my new plans, uh, etc. So nothing... Um, no, nothing changes in terms of the basic functionalities, but now uh, I can use this tenant to, for example, at the end configure, apart from Zenodo, my own institution, uh, institutional uh, repository, so that I push the DMPs there. Um, and yes, so you can see, I can now switch to the default. And then afterwards, we can uh, show you how you uh, can change these things. Uh, and you can see also this, um, this folder uh, icon where if you click it, you can see and read all the notifications that you have received so far. I haven't received anything from here. Uh, so, but if, um, if my colleague, for example, uh, Maria, Who's in the poll? Uh, changes something, uh, for example, in this, in this, let me add you, Maria. Okay, in this particular plan, then I will be notified. Um, what else? Uh, let me actually see. What else? In app notifications are there. Uh, the login I showed you. Oh, yes. How we can review DMPs and, and plans in general? Uh, I can go to any plan that is available at the moment. For example, let's go to this one. And I can click edit. Uh, go to the first description, for example. And then um, if I go further in, for example, let's say give details on the data format, then this icon appears uh, 
And if I click it, I can add my comment here and leave a comment for this particular question uh, and answer uh, that is provided by my colleagues and have it either as visible or I can keep it to myself because maybe that's a personal note that I want to, to, to make. Uh, so I want to hide it. But let's keep it visible for the moment. And it's like this. Well, I think it's just, yeah. Maybe I just have this action. Let me use this one. Let me minimize a bit, see so what you can see. And if I add my description, okay, next I will be able. Oops, so let me because I'm distracted by that thing okay can you see now sorry i switched uh to the wrong um to the wrong <laughs> to the wrong we have so many test instances at the moment and i switched to the wrong one uh but this is the comment that i made maybe i can uh, click and reply reply to the comment and there i can see one reply, and then I can continue to discuss. Or if I want to have it as, as hidden, comment. And this is hidden. So if, um, if I share it now, uh, it won't be visible to everyone, just me. Uh, in the future, this feature is going to be expanded. Uh, we have a lot of uh, things that we need to add on this. For example, in our next release, all these comments that you find here, you will be able to find them in one, uh, let's say, uh, space. Uh, from the side, you will just need to open this space and find all the comments for this particular plan. At the moment, we don't have it, uh, but we are working uh, already on it for the next release. Uh, so anyways, we're going to have more, more things to add in this feature. And then here you can see the notification that I received from uh, Maria, probably. Yes, that she modified the uh, plan that I invited her to collaborate on. Maria is now user, yeah, this is her uh, anonymized user, I would say. And I can view it. To, to switch um, your settings, yeah, Maria is not modifying it, so I cannot see. To switch your settings uh, and personalize where you receive different updates, you can go to your profile app again. Everything is happens on this part. My profile settings, and then um, go notification preferences here on the under uh, your profile, and it gives you different. Um, actions where we, when we see an, an action from the user, we uh, send the, an update. Uh, when you invite someone, a user, so I have selected, for example, first to be informed in, in, in the app so that I don't receive the email. And if they don't find me in the app, then uh, they will, um, if, if the in-app, let's say, um, communication uh, is not reached, is unsuccessful, then I will receive an email. Um, 
when the description is finalized, then we also send an, uh, a, a, an update and I have configured it to be in the app first. And then if this is not uh, access, uh, achievable, then in the email. And then we, you know, we have listed all the different uh, actions here and you can just uh, switch to, um, to meet your needs. Right, then what else did I want to uh, show? Maybe we have questions first because I have so many things to, to there, there are many different uh, new things. So maybe we can have some questions before I move on to the rest. Do you have any questions? For the moment, there are no questions neither in the chat or in the notes, but uh, if anyone uh, would like uh, to comment, please uh, raise your hand or uh, open your mic. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Maybe I can... Um, or Teresa, you would like to... No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really excited. Um, I'm wondering um, the um, comment function would also help to review plans. Um, if you had that in mind, or yeah, do you think in a, in a broader perspective? Um, So, um, you, yeah. Yes, this function, uh, you can use it to review plans, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. It looks, it looks great. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't understand the, mm -hmm. the question. You possibly have other tools for review, the more formalized yeah. um. yes so the first uh, I mean you you can use it uh, as it is today and then in September probably we'll have the next release so it will be expanded but the mm -hmm. functionality so, so you can you can start using it like after uh, you receive the email that it's up. We will send out an email when the release is up. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, let's see, uh, what else? Then the pre-filling, uh, maybe I can uh, show the pre-filling uh, here probably. Um, so let's say that I want to create a new plan, a, a new blueprint. Okay, I give it a name. Uh, I select uh, the first section to be about, I don't know, let's say this is about policy and I add uh, um, custom field so that it's rich text. And then I have another section where this section will be about prefilling data, let's say. And I select my description template. So I select which the prefilling source I want to be is it open or is it Zenodo? Or I can configure my own sources and use this, for example, if it's an internal one or if it's uh, something else apart from open or in Zenodo. Um, and I can select uh, which template uh, I want to see uh, to to prefill this with this source. And I can do the same by adding another section, for example, to pre I 
better on software, maybe. And I can select um, the template again that I want and the pre-filling source or sources. You can select more than one. And I can save this. Uh, yes, of course, I haven't added something that is very valuable. So let's do it now. Very quickly, title, description. And language, I think. Uh, and access, okay. And access. Now we will be good. Save. Okay, I have to add the labels, but uh, let me quickly do it. And now it's said, okay, good. Now I can finalize it. I can download it uh, as an XML uh, file, this blueprint, the structure of my plan. Uh, and then now I can use it. Uh, so we call it prefilling blueprint. Let's go and use it, start new plan. Okay, then I add description to give more information about this blueprint. Then I use the pre-filling blueprint that I just created, click next, and I see uh, the, um, the structure as I, as I created the policy pretext. I can write whatever I want here, the title of the, of the, blue, of the plan, the description. I can select the language, let's say English, and I can select if it's going to be visible uh, and then publicly uh, published as open access or restricted for the moment. I can save it. And if I go to the next section, I see that I have select this particular template and I can pre-fill from, I think, opener this time, yes. Um, a digital object, which in this case is a data set, I think. Yes. Oh, wow. That's so, <laughs> that was not a good, uh, a good example, but okay, save. And I can see that some information was also pre-filled inside this template, which was as uh, it, it was provided as a table. And if I go back to my plan, I can do the same for the software. Pre-filling from Zenodo. Okay. These are very bad examples of uh, fatigue failure. Save. And then if I go here, I can see that more things were pre-filled as well um, in the template that was as a table. Uh, this template was uh, providing a table to fill in. I can save and then I can also finalize. And then I can see what I did here. I can open it again, check it, and continue working on it and uh, adding comments. So I think, yeah, you can see what I did. And 
uh, add comments. I can also invite others to this plan uh, and give them, we have expanded the roles that uh, Argo supports. So as an owner, that was the same as before, as a viewer, so you don't, so you have no other rights than viewing. As a description co contributor, that means that you have editing rights to descriptions. And as a reviewer, that means you are only able to um, review, to, to use the functionality of um, the comment. Um, and I can also select what section of this plan that I'm sharing, I want this person to be a reviewer? Uh, is it going to be the policy that I created, for example, is it going to be the prefilling data, the prefilling software, or all? And I can invite them. Uh, internal means that I already have this, ha have been collaborating on Argos with this user. External means it's, uh, I, or it's someone that I don't know if they're using um, Argos, so let's just, in any case, add their email so that I invite them. Before, we didn't have this functionality, so we expanded that as well to include uh, um, people from outside and be able to, uh, to have that. And I can do the same for more. At the same time, give different rights to different sections and invite people to, to, to collaborate on this, on this plan. Um, and now for the tenant, maybe, uh, you see here on the left, this list with functionalities has significantly enlarged. Uh, we used to have only the blueprints, the description templates, and the description types, but now we have a lot of things that correspond to the pre-filling sources, these three, uh, and also to the tenants. Um, so, for example, if I want to create a tenant, I can do it oops, like that, so now I'm in the wrong tenant, and then um, maybe let's go here, or not. Let me go here. Oh, that's better. Yeah. Um, okay, and I can configure um, the time zone, the colors, what colors I want this tenant to have. We saw before the, the purple, we could switch primary and secondary colors. It is randomly now clicking things. Okay. And save. Uh, and yeah. I can see the tenant as we saw it before. Uh, in Argos. Do you still see my screen because I don't see the floating panel, so I don't know how to switch. I don't know how to leave it at the moment. So maybe, can you, uh, Julia, take my screen because I cannot do <laughs> <turn> it? <laughs> yes, tell me. Um, we can see at the moment, uh, uh, your uh, web page uh, where it's uh, written Argos uh, uh, Devel. Devel. Yeah, perfect. So this is what we are uh, uh, looking at at the moment. Uh, I want to see you though. Ah, okay. Uh, so how to do the stop sharing? Uh, let me see if I can force this. Um, Because I don't know why it doesn't do it. I, I don't see the, I, 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 I hid the floating panel before. So now 
think that's the okay okay thank you so much <laughs> you have seen uh, my <laughs> that worked that worked yes so this is a like a preview uh, like you know uh, uh, very briefly what uh, you will now be able to do and what we have been working on. And I would like to have a discussion um, on these features, um, have questions, uh, please feel free. Um, yeah. Yes, there is. Thank you so much. Um, may I please ask, um, you, you showed that we can invite people from outside. Do they need to have an account for Argos, or does it not matter if they have an account or not? They will need to log in. Uh, they will receive a, an email notification and then they will be uh, redirected to the login page to log into Argos if they're not uh, a user. If they are, if it happens to be, because you, they might be using it, you don't know it, but you uh, invite them as an external, for example, then uh, it's fine. The system will recognize them. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me see. Anyone else? I see Moita is also here with us. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Ali. Um, but I, I have no burning questions. So ah. <laughs> I just uh, keep uh, listening. And what I do now is I prepare my country page, which is about one year too late. <laughs> but I will do it very soon. Ah, good. Good. So we'll be able to. OK, good. Uh, to hear from what you have been doing lately. Yeah. Nice. Okay, uh, regarding data management, many things are happening in Slovenia. We have, I don't know if uh, this is pertinent now. Um, Slovenia is funding um, open science through National Recovery and Resilience Plan. And we have a big national project with 20 um, public research organizations um, participating, uh, all universities and all institutes basically. Mm, and the, Slovenia, the University of Ljubljana is using um, uh, money from this project to employ mm -hmm. five data stewards. And oh, I'm nice. very happy to say that one of them is here with us, Matej. Uh, Matej, I hope you're listening. Oh, uh, here. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, uh, I am listening, and, but uh, I, I don't have my camera. Yeah, hi, Matej. He's employed with the Faculty of Arts. Uh, so um, I'm very pleased that he's here. Uh, they are still in the learning phase, as you can imagine. You cannot just find people from the shelf uh, with all knowledge, but they have really learned so much in a few months now. And uh, in autumn, uh, we will have a um, um, course, um, um, specialist course for data, data managers and so on, which will last uh, for three weeks. Um, each week, uh, four days, uh, six hours per day. So it will be uh, in physical form, and but this is limited participation and every, anybody interested can participate via Zoom. And this will be repeated twice more in 2025. Oh, and this is for um, Slovenia? Slovenia, uh, yeah. Affiliated. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. in Slovenian language. There will be some foreigner speakers um, but this is like uh, training for data specialists. Okay, very, I mean, very good. As Matej, uh, but the majority are just contact persons at uh, faculties, academies, uh, institutes that somehow uh, help with um, data management. Very good. Let us know, uh, Matej and Moisa, if, uh, if you can help. Uh, let us know, yeah. Yeah, it's very good to the. Uh, we we're in different calls in different uh, regions, so that's. Uh, I'm really excited to, to learning more. Uh, in the yeah, future. thank you. We'll let you know. Great. Thank you, Mike. Um, 
Uh, it's uh, also very good uh, uh, to use the community call uh, to exchange about trainings, uh, because as far as I remember, also in previous call, uh, we had uh, several uh, questions to how to involve more people in uh, uh, training, how to engage them um, in uh, not only for Argos, but uh, uh, also for uh, the new instances that uh, are developed uh, in several countries. Uh, if I remember well, uh, Teresa, we mentioned this uh, uh, last uh, uh, winter as well, how we can uh, learn each other from trainings uh, and experience in its uh, countries and universities. Yes. Uh, I also, Moita, hi. Yeah, I can share uh, what we did. So this is why I'm also late with the Open Air Country page. Um, in last three months, uh, we had uh, 26 events at 18 faculties and academies of the University of Ljubljana. They were all live events. We went to faculties and academies uh, with basically two um, events or two presentations. One was on open publishing and the other one research data management, including uh, data management plan. And attendance was really low, really low. Um, except let's say at the Faculty of Pharmacy, um, 30 PhD students were there for data management. Uh, at uh, Faculty of Natural Sciences and Engineering, Dean presented, uh, was there present all the time. And Faculty of Health Sciences, the Dean and two Vice Deans were present all the time. So it's really very different. But um, generally attendance of researchers, uh, teachers and PhD students was quite low. On the contrary, for this uh, specialist training uh, on data professionals that we will have in autumn, uh, interest is huge. That <laughs> uh, keeps the show, yeah, but this is needed, yeah. Oh, wow. 26 events. <laughs> That's a lot. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I mean, I cannot imagine. Wow. Let me see. Uh, I see also Yeni on the call. Yeni, hi. Uh, I see you, you are also involved in different things. Uh, you, you have been doing a lot also, if you would like to, to say a few things. Hi. Uh, sorry, I'm listening with the uh, half an ear. Um, yes, but we are, we are doing quite a bit in Norway. We are currently in the project uh, on aligning DMP guidance between the large four universities in Norway, um, working with guidance texts for support staff, working with the DMP template, as well as guidance for users. So that's very interesting. And we get the opportunity to think a lot about DMPs uh, in a conceptual way, thinking about who is a stakeholder, what do they actually need from a DMP, what is their motivation to ask for DMPs. So that's very interesting. Yeah, that's uh, something that uh, we sometimes forget. <laughs> like, you know, we, we 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 take it maybe for granted that, you know, you can, um, we have this, for example, Science Europe templates, guidance and everything, but then how can you personalize it or how have others done that? Uh, and how can we maybe see harmonize things? Yeah, that's, that's very good. It's very exciting to see the new functionalities in Argos. Um, so we are also looking at what national DMP tool should we perhaps choose? Um, and we see that different tools are developing uh, or perhaps competing. Um, and it's very interesting to see um, that there's also some convergence in the functions. Yes, yes. Um... So the next interesting question is how easy will it be to transfer DMP templates or DMPs between tools? Could we, could we use the best of all worlds in a way? Well, this we are uh, working on that in the context of the os project, so. <laughs> You will be able to at least some templates uh, exchange uh, exchange them and the content of these templates, but this again will be very 
very minimum and uh, not the standardized at least approach uh, like today if you see the rda the mp common standard is it's not everything there you your dmp has so much information that the standard doesn't cover so this can be exchanged but does it give you something more no <laughs> i mean uh, we're trying Let, let's see let's see through the uh, os trails uh, what what it's announced in all trails that there will be the standard will be expanded. Do you have any timeline for that work? Oh, oh I don't remember it by heart. Um, no, I don't remember uh, exactly which month, but I think that's a later uh, development because at the moment we are working on the uh, uh, aligning interoperability, well, ensuring interoperability between the scientific knowledge graphs, between the DMP tools and between the um, uh, fair assessors, as well as their interactions with each other. Uh, like when a DMP tool, for example, uh, embeds fair metrics, how to do it uh, and in a standardized way anyways, because you know, we don't want to bring the problem of the fair assessors into the DMPs because we know what happens. Currently, you go to different fair assessors with the same data set, you get different results, and then you are like, okay, I will use the one that is better. Uh, or I get confused and uh, you know, I don't know what to do. Uh, so we're standardizing this and we're bringing them to DMP tools, for example. Um, but that's that's further in the timeline. So next year, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, right, Teresa, yes. Well, thank you so much. Um, this is a thought that I have not reflected very much about. Um, but we have heard of micro publications. So one can just it was the very short message and set a door to it. Would there in the future possibly an opportunity to export micro publications from a DMP? Because that might also make it easier um, for different DMP tools to talk about. I think transferring a DMP from one tool to another might be a very hard task. But if one can export smaller units that can be exported in the standardized way it might perhaps be a way yeah, to transfer some information between DMP tools. I'm not sure if that would be feasible. Um, I've now recently looked a bit at literature and uh, learned that there are many more DMP tools than I thought that would exist. So it's already so many that I don't see any chance to standardize to find any common standards between them. In addition, we, we have many stakeholders if it comes to DMP. There are uh, yeah, the, the administrations of the organization. Now in Sweden, the people responsible for the archive are an important stakeholder. They want information um, that they can use for archiving. And I would say the research has come far behind <laughs> sometimes um, because, um, yeah, um, the, the administration um, has higher priority. Yeah, um, so um, that makes it very complex uh, um, to work with DMPs and to exchange uh, information because we have different groups that have different interests. And added to this, we have different tools. But maybe I really, I am, I have no idea how hard it is to build a DMP tool. Um, so <laughs> I very much appreciate the work that you do uh, um, for us and uh, yeah but i thought perhaps micro applications from dmps yes. mm -hmm. might be something to think about because it's easier to standardize them thank you yes i will and thank you for this i will actually uh, pass it over to um 
the uh, OS Trails uh, technical partners because we are also looking at you know what um, how what is the format for example we're going to all uh, ex to, to all up, uh, implement uh, so that we are uh, in a standard way so maybe micro publications is one I know for the JSON will stay I know this mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, and it will be expanded, but let me, yeah, let me put in in the discussion. Um, who knows? Maybe the the rest <laughs> will will like it. And thank you, thank you for for uh, for this. Well, that's, that's a weird idea. Um, yeah. Thank you. Right. Um, anything else um, from Javier, Katia, Claire? Oh, Teresa, sorry, you you have your hand up again. Yeah, and I I might add another question, and um, this is not my opinion, but I know um, we have talked to researchers, and they would love to have a wizard say. We fill my data management plan so that I just have to um, adjust some parts and it's ready. Um, that's like a dream. I don't think that's very realistic. Have you uh, have you had discussions about that? Um, um, yes. I think it's wonderful now that you actually have a pre-filling function. Um, that's Sure, not at the level of a wizard, but um, the option is there. And um, yes, and you can actually configure your own API uh, and get you know metadata from your own services to add in different parts of the DMP. For example, if you have I don't know an ethics uh, API for for ethics uh, department, then you can use this. Uh, but of course, automations are good. But we, there, in my opinion, you will need the human eyes sure. to have a look yes. at the end. Um, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have uh, any other question, comment, something to add to the conversation? It's interesting uh, that uh, it can be also nice uh, functionality on the point of view um, of a researcher because I worked in uh, clinical research and uh, um, for me the uh, ethics was uh, usually looking more or less in the same way uh, because I was uh, always working in the same uh, uh, part of a uh, uh, clinical trial. Uh, so it will be very uh, interesting also to suggest uh, some possibilities for some particular field. Um, because for instance, uh, how you are managing the clinical data from patients and uh, how you store them, this is something that can be suggest uh, by uh, an Argos uh, uh, template that is specific maybe for uh, uh, that type of research or uh, uh, how maybe to add this kind of information when uh, you had already um, uh, um, ethical committee approval uh, because in this sense uh, you feel much more comfortable as a researcher uh, because your expertise may not be related to uh, ethics uh, or uh, law. So having uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, functionality that can uh, suggest uh, the researcher how, um, how some data should be um, managed, reviewed, or uh, um, stored, this could be very interesting. So it's good that uh, uh, in the North countries, uh, there are a lot of researchers that are uh, 
having the same uh, questions. And uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Julia. Okay, then um, if there are no other questions, you will receive uh, the email with uh, when the new release is out. Uh, so you can check these functionalities uh, when they're up. In any other case, if you want to test things, if you want to give us your feedback, we're happy to provide you with a test instance so that you do that. Um, yeah, uh, and I think this is the last community call of the summer, right? Like before we yeah. go to the summer holidays. So then we will resume probably in September, right, Julia? Yeah, in September. Exactly. So we will send you uh, an email uh, with uh, a short recap of uh, what uh, uh, we have done the last community calls. Uh, so we are wishing you a good uh, summer uh, because we know that in, you may have uh, different uh, holidays in July or in August. And uh, in September, we wake up, uh, we see the new functionality again uh, meanwhile, uh, if you are testing uh, and uh, give us uh, the feedback, uh, it would be also helpful uh, for uh, the last release in production. And uh, um, we will also send you the um, update for the new registration for uh, the call of the next year. Uh, and for any update, uh, feel free always to look at uh, the OpenAir webpage in uh, support and uh, community calls and reach out to us anytime, uh, also via the help desk. Thank you for joining today. And thanks, Sally, for- uh, Thank you, Julia. And it was nice to, to see you all. Hope you like the new release. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Let's see in September. Thanks a lot. Have a nice thank day. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you to Maria, actually, my colleague, who has been doing a great job uh, testing uh, everything, and making sure that, uh, you know, the, the developers hear what we, what we want. Thank you. Bye.